Hey guys, and welcome back to My Lilac Hill. Brittany here with you today. It is a wet and cold and dreary fall day. It is Friday, November 4th. And today what I'm doing is just getting everything I need ready for cold and flu season. Um, ideally, I would have done this about four or five weeks ago, but time kind of got away from me. And it seems like everybody around me has been sick lately. My son was sick um, last week, and then this week my boyfriend and his family are all sick. So it's just a gentle reminder that cold and flu season is here, and it's time to get those preparations made. Um, I had a lot of people on my TikTok asking for recipes on some of the stuff that I'm making. So I decided to just do an in-depth video here on my YouTube channel. And um, if you're not following me on TikTok, I'll leave a link for that for you below. I post a lot more frequently on there just because it's quicker and easier um, than like a full YouTube video. And then um, I'll see how many I can get through. I have like eight or nine recipes I wanna get done today. If I don't get them all done today, I may have to split it into two videos and work on some tomorrow. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started here in the kitchen. I've just sanitized all of my jars and they should be dry. So let's go. So the first thing that we're going to get started on is homemade cranberry juice. Now in this bowl, I have um, three packages from the store of cranberries that I have um, rinsed thoroughly. So I brought these home and I put them in water with baking soda, let them sit for 15 to 20 minutes. And then I rinsed all of that off really well. You wanna make sure you get all of that baking soda off of there. Um, and then these are ready to now go in my jars. I have, I just had, um, let's see six quart jars left that were empty i've used all of my quart jars so we're going to do these first i think i'm going to have more cranberries left over but we'll see and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take half a cup which this is a one cup measure but half a cup goes into each quart jar yeah i'm gonna have a lot of cranberries left over but while we're talking about these cranberries and how much i have I spent on all of these cranberries, I spent $4.50. And I am now making my own organic, no sugar added, just cranberries, cranberry juice. If you were to buy a quart of that at the store, which I'll throw in a screenshot here, seven to eight dollars, depending on your area. I spent less than that on all of these cranberries and I'm probably gonna end up with about 15 to 20 quarts by the time I'm done with this. So a fraction of the cost. Now, yes, my jars do cost money, but I've had these jars for years and years and years and I reuse them. So I don't count that as a factor anymore. They've more than paid for themselves. And yes, I do have to have new lids, but again, that's a, a couple cents, like 10 to 15 cents per jar. So I'm not counting that. Cranberries look amazing. And this is the best time of year to get them around the holidays, they're on sale. Um, so I got each package was $1.50 and I got three packages um, and look how many cranberries I have left and I've already filled six quart jars. So I am going to have a lot of juice here for less than what one quart of this juice would cost me at the store. So I think it's well worth it. Now I'm going to let these sit here. I have my canner going over here. Now we're not pressure canning, we're just water bathing. So I took my gauge and my um, weight off. I'm just got the lid on so that it keeps the heat in a little bit better and I'm heating my water. Once this gets almost ready to go, then I will turn on this pot and my tea kettle to heat up water to fill those jars. Um, you do want the water to be hot. Now, I did not add sugar. I prefer no sugar added cranberry juice. If you would like to add sugar, the rule of thumb is half a cup of sugar for every quart jar. So you can always adjust and go down from there if you'd like. If you would rather leave out the sugar like I do, you can do that as well. Um, what we'll do is we'll work on some of our other recipes while all of this water is um, getting warm and ready to can, and then we'll water bath these for 25 minutes when the time comes. Now, while we're talking about homemade remedies and cold and flu season, you'll see I do have 
two cans of my homemade turkey stock over here. I just made this last month with um, a turkey carcass that I had and some leftover vegetable scraps. This is excellent. You can drink this or you can just choose to cook with it, um, but this is a great immune boost for cold and flu season as well. I've got this sitting out here because I'm going to make some dumplings later and take that over to my boyfriend and his family since they've not been feeling well. And of course I will eat some as well. So now that we've got our cranberries ready for um, the canner, once we have the water hot, we'll kind of go to the next recipe. I've got to clean up just a little bit here and get some stuff out and we'll move on to fire cider. Okay, so turns out I wasn't filming during any of what I was just doing. So I'll walk you through what I was doing. Um, so I'm just kind of getting my stuff ready to build my fire cider, just kind of slicing everything. I peeled my onion and my garlic now I do keep all of my onion and garlic scraps. This will go in a container in the freezer and anytime I make turkey stock or any bone broth of any sort, I add onion, garlic, um, I, I don't add a whole lot of garlic, but I will add a little bit, celery and carrots, as well as some herbs. So I only needed two sprigs of rosemary. So my other sprig of rosemary, I did end up putting in here. This will go in the freezer to make stock later. Again, we wanna make sure we're not wasting anything. Um, and then typically I would want the actual root for horseradish, but I didn't find that in my store. And I had some fresh grated already in my refrigerator. So I am gonna use that. Um, I'm getting ready to do my ginger prep but I'm hearing that my water in my canner over here is ready or close to ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my hands thoroughly anytime you're doing anything in the kitchen, but especially canning or making um, herbal medicine, you want to make sure your hands are extremely clean. So since I was messing over here with all of the fire cider stuff, I'm going to scrub my hands so that I can go back over to the cranberries and start getting those in the canner and I'll show you what that looks like. So now I'm just going to wipe my rims. Uh, I do this with just a little bit of distilled vinegar. You just want to make sure that you don't have anything on there so that you get a nice good seal. I also throw in, um, I may have to get that one when I get the other jars done. I also throw in vinegar into my canner. Um, just kind of helps prevent some of that hard water buildup. You just want to put your lids on finger tight, put them into your canner with hot water. It is incredibly important that you don't put these hot jars into a canner full of cold water. You will regret it. Your jars will break. So don't do that. And you'll kind of hear after you've put the water in with the cranberries and they've sat for a second, You'll hear the cranberries starting to pop open. That's perfectly fine. They're going to do that in the canner anyways. That's how you're gonna get that juice out. Now I am not a professional canner. I have canned for about eight or nine years now and I am pretty much self-taught. So if you see me doing something that you would not do, then don't do it. Do what you feel is right and do it the way that you feel is right. I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm perfect, but I do try to keep everything as clean as possible while I'm canning, that is extremely important. So we will fill this jar up with water, it's almost ready, and then um, put these in the canner and then we'll get back to fire cider. Okay, so they are all in the canner. I am going to kind of even out the space just a little bit even though they will move a little while canning. Put the lid back on, bring it up to a boil, and process for 25 minutes. Okay, so now we are back on to prepping for our fire cider. 
Um, what I have done already is I've cut up my onions, ginger, garlic. I've got my rosemary setting here. I have my cilantro over here. And these peppers are frozen jalapenos from the garden. I grew these this past summer. I just cut slits in them and put them in the freezer and they're ready for me when I'm ready to do fire cider. Now you can use fresh jalapenos and slice them. Um, you can use frozen, whatever you have on hand. This is what I do every year. I freeze them and let them sit so that they're ready to go when it's time to make fire cider. And so now what I'm gonna do is just cut up all of my citrus. Um, there is so many different ways that you can make fire cider and not one of them is the right or the wrong way. I go extremely citrus heavy on my fire cider. And the reason I do that is because citrus is incredibly high in vitamin A and C. And then it's also just really, really good for your circulatory system as well as an immune boost. So for fire cider, it is perfect. Now what I do is I leave the peels on um, so I have already washed these and they are ready to go. Um, and then I'm just going to slice them and then we're just going to kind of build our fire cider from there. But it's just really at that point, adding all the ingredients to the jar. And I don't measure anything. Some people may think that you should measure. I don't, I just throw it all in there and it's going to ferment and all of the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that are in these ingredients will come out during that process. Um, if you want to measure, there is a number of different recipes online and you can follow those. This is just how I do it. And be better than me and have sharp knives because none of my knives are ever sharp. I have better knives than I have. The limes, I'm just going to kind of cut them in half because they're already so small. But the lemons and the oranges, I'll probably just continue to cut into slices. I'm just going to keep slicing and then when I get done with that, I'll bring you along so that we can add all of our ingredients and talk about the benefits of each. Okay, so I have a one gallon jar. This is not a canning jar. It's really kind of a decorative jar but it has a lid, so that was what was important. Now you'll see here, I've lined this lid with parchment paper, and that is because the apple cider vinegar that we are going to put into this jar may not have the best reaction with a metal lid. So if you're using a metal lid, use cheesecloth, well probably cheesecloth is not the best option. Use like a coffee filter or parchment paper to protect that metal lid from corrosion. Um, or you can even just cover it with a tea cloth. Like if you have an old tea towel or some old handkerchiefs, make sure they're extremely clean, cover the top and put a rubber band over it and that would work as well. I have this available, so that's what I'm gonna use. So what I did is I just added all of my citrus here, really just so I had some space on my cutting board to put my jar so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, but it's this is basically a layered effect. You just wanna throw all your ingredients in, cover it with the apple cider vinegar, and then it's gonna sit for four weeks in a cold, dark place. I'm going to put it in one of my cupboards at the opposite end of the kitchen from my stove. If you don't have a cupboard that you can put it in, you can wrap this in a towel and put it in a cool, dry place. Just keep an eye on it. I check mine daily. I also burp mine. There's a couple of different schools of thought on whether or not you need to burp it. I like to err on the side of caution and not have a bunch of gases created in this fermentation that then spill out everywhere. So I burp mine daily. That also allows me to check and just make sure there's no mold. There should not be any mold forming on this if you do it correctly, but it's something you wanna keep an eye on because you don't want mold growing. So anyways, we're gonna get started adding everything else. So I've got my citrus in here. I'm just going to kind of tuck my rosemary in here on the side. I like to make it a little pretty and I like to be able to see my greens. So I usually try to wedge the rosemary on the glass with some of that citrus and I'll make on the other side I'll make some room to do the same thing with my cilantro. Now, I have rinsed this cilantro thoroughly already 
Um, I am gonna cut some of the stem off, but the rest of it is going to go in the jar and I'm just going to kind of wedge it down here as well. And then I'm going to add in some of my ginger and garlic. And then also I'm gonna pick them up by the stems so that I don't get a lot of that oil since they have got slits in them. I don't know if you're even gonna be able to see, but I do have slits cut in my peppers. And I don't want all that capsaicin all over my fingers. So I'm going to pick them up by the stems and put them in. These also were washed thoroughly before putting them in the freezer. Um, you wanna make sure all of your produce is extremely clean that you're putting in here. And then I'm going to kind of tuck some of my onions down on the side. You don't have to be this particular about it. I am just somebody who likes visually appealing things. That, that aesthetic just appeals to me. Um, so I just try to make the things that I'm doing look somewhat pretty. Now as this sits, it's all gonna kind of shift anyways and not really matter. But if that's something that you don't really care about, you can simply just throw everything into the jar in whatever order or manner or fashion that you want. So now that all of my, um, oh, there's some more garlic. So now that all of my produce items are added, I'm gonna go ahead and add my horseradish. You don't have to add horseradish if you don't like it. I know it's kind of one of those polarizing things. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love it, so I'm adding it. Um, if you don't like super spicy things, probably don't add it. And maybe cut back on the peppers a little bit because keep in mind after this ferments, you're gonna be drinking this. You're gonna take about a shot a day. It's gonna be spicy. So if you can't handle that, you can always add a little bit of honey to that shot. Um, some people actually add honey into their ferment. I don't, I use my honey in different ways. But if you wanna sweeten it up a little bit, you certainly can do that. Or um, the citrus does help with that as well, but you can always cut back on some of those spicier items. I also add in some whole black peppercorn. Again, I don't measure a single thing. I just throw it in. So every single time I make fire cider, it is a little different. This is cayenne pepper. I put some of that in. Like I said, if you don't like spicy things, maybe don't make it the way I make it because it is extremely spicy, but I like spice. And then this is turmeric, which that is one thing that I do not just pour the whole thing in. I add about a tablespoon of turmeric. A little bit of turmeric goes a long way and a tablespoon is a lot of turmeric. So you don't need a whole lot. So that's it, that's all the ingredients in the jar. Now all that's left is to add the apple cider vinegar. It is important, you don't have to use Bragg's. Bragg's is my preferred brand, um, but it is important that you use the organic with the mother raw apple cider um, vinegar. So, oh, piece of ginger got away from me. So we'll add that in there. And then you are just going to cover this until or you're gonna pour the apple cider vinegar in until everything is completely covered. I'm probably gonna to have to go get my other bottle of vinegar because I don't think this is gonna go quite all the way. Ooh, we're close. I am gonna to have to go get that other bottle. Give me just a second. Okay, so once you have this all covered, I was talking a little bit earlier about if you do this correctly, you won't have mold. Um, I don't do it on the first day, but typically the second day, I will come in and add one of my glass fermentation weights. I typically don't do it on the first day, but maybe I will just so I can show you on the video. I'll have to go get one. But we'll have this all the way over the top. I think I am gonna go get one. Give me a second. Okay, so this is a glass fermentation weight. And what you're gonna do, let me see if I can help you guys out here. Okay, so we'll take the spoon that I used to measure the turmeric. I'm going to push everything under this vinegar, especially this onion that wants to keep popping up. We're gonna try and get it further down. 
Okay, now that pretty much everything is underneath of that vinegar, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plop this glass fermentation weight on the top and push down until it's covered as well. What this does is it's gonna hold everything under that liquid and prevent mold. You can use anything. If you have like another mason jar that will fit in there, like maybe one of the little jelly jars, the little short ones that will fit in there, you can add that in there. Just anything that's gonna keep all of your produce submerged. That's the important part. But again, check it daily, make sure everything is looking good. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to put my lid on, got my parchment paper here to protect that metal lid from erosion. Not erosion. <laughs> protect that metal lid from corrosion, that's the right word. Um, and then I will label this. I don't have a pen over here, but what I'll do on my parchment paper is I will just label the date that I made it. And then I just know that it's four weeks. And then what you'll do is you'll strain all of this and the liquid that is left after straining is what you'll wanna put in a jar in the fridge and take about a shot a day. And that will help prevent um, cold and flu. And then there's some other good benefits as well. The ginger in this tincture is really good for menstrual pain, nausea, weight loss management, and it also helps prevent heart disease. And then um, there's some other benefits. It really just depends on what ingredients you add to your fire cider. So like I added turmeric. Turmeric is great for joint pain, um, anti-inflammatory. It also helps with um, immune, immune boosting, which is the whole reason I'm making this fire cider. And it is said to have anti-cancer um, properties as well. Now with herbalism, you can't really claim that anything heals, prevents, or cures anything. So I'm not making any of those claims. Do your own research. But um, the, the ingredients that I add, I add for specific reasons. And a lot of that I found in my herbalism books that I will, um, I'll show you here at the end of the video. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to make is my favorite, uh, I guess you could call it like a cough syrup or a cold syrup medicine type thing. Um, it's three ingredients. It is raw honey. It is best if you use local, just because the local honey will uh, expose you to your local allergens and help you to combat those. If you can't find local honey, raw honey is fine. There's still a ton of great properties in honey, but it is best if you can find local. The other ingredients are ginger and lemon. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slice your lemon and ginger very thin, and you're gonna rotate lemon, ginger, lemon, ginger, lemon, ginger, until you have your jar full. And then you're gonna pour the honey over top of it. Let it sit for a minute to get some of the air bubbles, add more honey if you need to. And then that's gonna go in your refrigerator. And um, it is best if you let it sit for a couple weeks before you start consuming it, but nothing is going to hurt you if you start consuming it immediately. Um, now I'm making two jars here because again, my boyfriend and his family are sick, so I'm gonna take some over to them. And then for prevention, you'll wanna take one tablespoon a day. And if you're sick, you can take up to three tablespoons per day. Now, keep in mind it is honey. And while it's not cane sugar, honey does have a lot of sugar in it naturally. So if you have anything uh, like diabetes or insulin resistance, or your body has a hard time processing sugar, please consult a doctor before determining if you should even take this or what your proper dose would be. I don't have those issues, so I am able to take the dose that I stated. Um, but again, if you are somebody who does struggle with that, please consult your doctor before taking this. Um, but some of the benefits, um, well, it's extremely high in vitamin C because of your lemons. And then again, ginger is great for menstrual pain, nausea. It does help to manage weight loss as well. Um, it does have some um, prevented or some properties of it as well that help with um, heart disease. So ginger is a great thing to add into any of your remedies. And then honey, 
I could make uh, I could make a video about each one of these ingredients that I'm using in all of my recipes today and they be very long videos about all of the benefits of them and probably still not be complete. Um, I'm just learning and it seems like I could continue to go down this rabbit hole forever and still not know everything. But some of the things that I do know about honey is that it's extremely high in vitamins and minerals and enzymes. And fun fact, honey is actually the only food that contains uh, penicembrin, which is an antioxidant associated with improved brain function. So honey is a superfood, and I consume it regularly. So that's why I added in here with my cough syrup. I'm going to go ahead and get started slicing some of this. I hope you can hear me over my canner. I did start my timer for my cranberry juice. Um, so we'll try to get this done and then should be ready to take the cranberry juice out of the canner by then. Um, but I'm just going to kind of slice this up and let you watch me with what I do. It's very simple. I just do it in layers, lemon, ginger, lemon, ginger, and then pour my honey over the top. Now I am using the same knife that I was using to make my fire cider. If you're gonna do that, make sure you get all of the pepper and onion and garlic juice and horseradish and everything off of your knife. Make sure it's a very clean knife before you start this process because you don't want jalapenos in here. It's not gonna hurt you, but it's not gonna taste as good. So just make sure everything you're working with is clean. I had already cleaned my lemons, so I'm just gonna get started slicing and we'll go from there. One of these days, I'm gonna learn how to keep a sharp knife. It hasn't happened yet. And yes, I have cut myself in the kitchen several times because I don't keep my knife sharp enough. do I'm going to take my pickle packer now if you don't have one of these you can use whatever you have on hand um, but it does really help to have one of these this has a side for a regular can a regular mouth jar and a wide mouth jar these are wide mouth jars so I'm just going to take that in you don't have to press super hard you just want to gently press this down it just gives you a little bit more room in your jar and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the honey in over top. I don't know, let me see if I can move my cutting board. Let's see if you can see a little better when I pour the honey in. It's a little better. Okay, so now I'm just going to pour the honey right over the top. And you do wanna go kind of slow because it's gonna to have to work its way down into the crevices. And you can kind of help it along. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll get a butter knife out and I'll just kind of pull things off the side of the jar and make sure you keep your ginger in there. But that just kind of helps that honey go further down. And you'll just repeat this process until you think your jar is full. Um, so I'll let that sit for a minute and I'll start working on this one. There is no um, right amount or measurement that I could give you to tell you how much honey you're gonna need for this. It depends on your jar size and um, how well you packed your ginger and lemon. I like to go heavy on the ginger and lemon because that's the properties that are gonna help my uh, cold syrup. Let me start over. Those are the properties that I want in my cold syrup to help me fight off cold and flu throughout the entire winter. So I'm less concerned about the honey because the lemon is going to kind of 
add juice to the honey and make it a little bit more liquidy anyways. And you can always add more honey as you need to as it sits in your fridge. Um, but I really want a lot of lemon and a lot of ginger. These are pint-sized jars and I'm making a mess with honey. Um, these are pint-sized jars and I put two lemons in each one and about two inches of ginger that I slice thinly in each jar. So there's quite a bit of ginger and lemon in these. And it is a messy process, but it is so worth it, I tell you what. I did not make any of my remedies last year because I had just so much going on in life and honestly couldn't afford to do it. And also I just didn't have the time. And I got sick uh, five or six different times last year and it seemed like I just couldn't fight it off. It may have just been the same sickness that I was just repeating over and over again because I couldn't fight it off. And in the years past, I think I started making these in 2017 or 2018. Um, in the years that I did make these and I was religious about taking it every day, I didn't get sick. Now, I'm not making any medical claims here. I'm just telling you my experience. So don't come at me if you try this and it doesn't work for you, but I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, it's just full of vitamins and minerals to help your body fight off cold and flu. You may still get sick, but at least your immune system will be better prepared to handle that sickness. Okay, I'm gonna be done with the honey on these. I'm gonna clean up and then put my lids on. These go in your refrigerator. And like I said, you can start consuming them immediately, um, but the longer they sit, the better it gets. As you run low on honey, you can always add more in and stir it up and let it sit. And this will last you all winter in the fridge. Keep an eye on it though. Make sure that everything is covered with that honey so that nothing starts to mold. If you start to see mold, you need to throw it out. It should not mold. I've never had it mold. I don't know why it would. Keep everything covered with that honey and you should not have a problem. But if you do see mold for some reason, it means you didn't do it right and you need to throw it out. Don't even risk it. So I'm gonna clean up and then I have six minutes left on my timer for that. By the time I get done cleaning up, it'll be time to take my cranberry juice out of the canner and we'll move on to the next recipe. Okay, I took my cranberries out of the canner. They are gonna sit here for 24 to 48 hours until the lids have all sealed. And then they're gonna go down into my um, extended pantry for storage. Probably need to sit four to six weeks before you start drinking them. Um, and then from there, they're good to go. And then you can also use the cranberries that are on top to add to like your oatmeal or your yogurt and then just drink the juice. Um, whatever you wanna use those cranberries for, you certainly can, but cheap, easy, and no additives. Gotta love it. Okay, I have three more recipes that I want to share with you guys. This next one is just a very simple oil of oregano. Um, and I'm using a, a bigger jar just because I don't have any of the half pint jars or jelly jars around. Those are all full in my pantry downstairs. So you can use a smaller jar, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna do um, approximately equal parts of dried oregano and your oil of choice. Typically, I would use an avocado oil. I'm completely out of avocado oil and I couldn't find any locally, I'll have to order it. So until then, I'm just using olive oil. It'll work the same. Like I said, just use your oil of choice. I prefer avocado oil, but olive oil is a great alternative as well. And if there is like one thing that you can afford to make for your family for cold and flu season, this is what I would want you to make. I also really love the cold syrup that we just made and the fire cider and I love the elderberry tinctures that I'm going to make a little bit later. Probably not going to get to those today. That'll be a separate video. I love all of that, but this can get rather expensive. So if for you and your family, you're on a little bit more of a budget, this is the one thing I would want you to make. Oregano has so many incredible properties. It helps reduce your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. It helps kill parasites. So if you have any sort of um, parasites inside of you, it will help kill those. It's great for gut health. Um, it's great for wound healing. It boosts your immune system. 
Um, this has been used to alleviate things like headaches, earaches, um, psoriasis, dandruff, and even athlete's foot. So this is an incredible thing to have on hand. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this oil over top of the dried um, oregano. We're gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna let it sit for four to six weeks. Then we're gonna strain it and put it in a tincture bottle. And then if you start to feel like you're getting sick or you're starting to get a headache or an earache or anything like that, start taking a dropper full as soon as symptoms arise. But only take this um, about 10 days at a time. So I'll take it for the first 10 days of cold season. Once it's ready, it's not gonna be ready for a few weeks, but once it's ready, I'll take it for about 10 days and then I will take a break and I won't use it again until I start feeling like I'm sick because it is very strong and you don't wanna overdo it. Again, do your research. Um, I will link several resources for you below, but do your research. This, there are things that you could do wrong with herbalism and you can overdo it. Um, so definitely do your research, but this is something that I would very strongly encourage you to have on hand. And it's super easy. It's just a matter of dried oregano and oil. Now, ideally, I would have grown this oregano, but my oregano did not, um, it didn't survive this year, so I didn't grow any. So this is just dried. I am gonna try and grow some next year, um, but progress over perfection. If you don't have the ideal situation, don't let that stop you from doing the best with what you have. So that's approximately equal parts. And then I'm gonna take a clean spoon. Very important that everything you're doing is clean. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of stir this around, make sure you get any of those dry pockets of oregano off the bottom. And then I'm gonna tap my spoon so that everything stays in my jar. You don't have to use parchment paper, it's oil. It's not gonna react with the lid, but I did it just so that I'd have a label. Um, so I'm gonna let this sit in my apothecary for four to six weeks, and then I will strain it. That's the one thing about these parchment paper ads. It's hard to get your lid on. There we go. So I will strain this. Um, I wrote what it is the day I made it and when it's ready, and I'll strain it and put it into a tincture bottle here in a few weeks. So I'm gonna clean up again and we'll move on to the next recipe, which is gonna be an orange tincture. Okay, the next thing that we're going to make is a orange peel tincture. You wanna take the peel of three oranges, and no, I did not waste the oranges. I put them in the fridge, and I'm gonna eat those as a snack throughout the weekend. Um, but you'll take three oranges, you'll peel it, you'll put the peels in a jar, glass jar, and then you have a couple of different options here. Um, with making tinctures, you can do a vinegar tincture, an alcohol tincture, or you can do a glycerin tincture. I don't like the glycerin tinctures, so I do either an apple cider vinegar or I use alcohol for my tinctures. You want to make sure if you're using alcohol, it needs to be at least 80 proof. Um, you can use any clear alcohol you want. I use vodka. Um, now, I feel comfortable doing this. I know that a lot of people don't like alcohol in their home. So if you prefer not to do alcohol, you can do vinegar or glycerin. Uh, I don't have experience making glycerin tinctures, so definitely do your research on that end of it. Um, but I feel comfortable using this because number one, I'm not pregnant and I'm not breastfeeding, so I don't have a problem with the alcohol. And then I typically, when I have this as a dropper, I put it in my hot tea and that evaporates off the alcohol anyway. So I'm not actually consuming any alcohol when I consume this tincture. So for me, um, vodka is just the way that I prefer to do it. I feel like the alcohol does a better job of extracting the nutrients out of the peel than say the um, vinegar does. Again, I've never done a glycerin tincture, so I don't really have any knowledge to speak on that end of it. But I'm gonna use vodka. You use whatever you feel is best for you and your family. And there is a couple of different rules of thought because if you are putting it in tea, it does evaporate the alcohol. So if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, some people feel comfortable with that. I do not. If I'm pregnant or I'm breastfeeding, I don't even take the chance. Um, but again, do whatever you feel is best for you and your family. But some of the things that this helps with, um, I just, I put the peels in here and I'm just gonna pour the vodka over top of it. But while I do that, I'm just gonna kind of talk about some of the benefits. 
So this is really good at aiding in digestive health. Um, so gut health, overall um, digestive activity. It also helps to um, reduce appetite. It can help with uh, nausea and cramps as well. And it is full of antioxidants to help your immune system, as well as I've heard that it can help prevent acne and also can maintain skin elasticity. So there's a lot of really good benefits in um, citrus, especially oranges. So once you have that full of vodka, what you're gonna do, I have a label. Since it is alcohol, I don't want it reacting with the metal lid. I don't know that it would, but I don't wanna take any chances on that. So I'm gonna use my parchment paper. I like to have that label anyways. And then I'm just going to put a lid on top of this. This will sit probably closer to that six week mark, but technically you can uh, strain it after four weeks. And then you'll strain it, put it into a tincture bottle with a dropper. And then how you would dose, um, I typically only take this if I'm nauseous or if I am sick. And I will add one dropper to a cup of typically chamomile tea, um, but really whatever tea I have on hand just one dropper. Um, I kind of try not to go crazy with my tinctures because they are a lot stronger. Um, and again, I'm new to herbalism, so it's just kind of something I'm dipping my toes into, but I love having this on hand and I eat oranges anyways, and this is a great way to reuse those peels. Speaking of reusing those peels, some other things that I've done, I've taken those peels and I've soaked them in white distilled vinegar and I use that as a um, cleaning product around my home so I don't have all of those harsh chemicals. So just another great way to use up your scraps, not waste as much, and be a little bit more holistic in your approach. Sorry guys, I forgot to film while I was adding my herbs to my jar, but the next recipe that we're gonna make is just an herbal oxymel, and you can choose whatever herbs you want to for this. Um, oxymel just means that it's an extraction of your herbs with the use of apple cider vinegar and honey. So the herbs that I chose for this are oregano because again, oregano is just a powerhouse herb that I feel like you need to have on hand. And then sage, thyme, and rosemary. So some of the benefits of this oxymel with the ingredients that I have chosen um, is it's extremely high in vitamins A, C, K, and B6. There's a lot of um, fiber in this. You get iron, copper, calcium, and magnesium from this oxmel. It's loaded with antioxidants, and because you're using honey, it is a natural antiviral, um, antibacterial, and anti-inflammatory, as well as um, it can help with infections and alleviating cough and congestion. So this is a tincture that I will make. Again, just like the last tincture we made, it will sit for four to six weeks, then be strained and put into a tincture bottle with a dropper. And I'll take a dropper a day when I am feeling like I'm getting sick. So it just kind of adds in, this is not something I take every single day throughout cold and flu season, because again, it does have some pretty strong herbs in it. So you need to kind of take it easy. Um, and I'm sorry I wasn't filming when I added these in. I did not measure. I just put equal parts of each herb in, probably about a tablespoon of each. And then I'm gonna add equal parts of honey and vinegar on top of that. And then we'll just label it. We'll let it sit and move on to the next recipe after that. So let's go ahead and get our honey in there first. And again, I'm just eyeballing. I am so bad about measuring things. Maybe you're supposed to measure this stuff. Everything that I have researched says kind of very, it, it's all very vague. Uh, I haven't come across a recipe that's super exact with like weights or precise measurements. So I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm new to this, so do your research. But these are tinctures that I have used in the past and enjoyed. And we'll always continue to have, as long as I can afford to do it, I'm going to have them in my apothecary for winter cold and flu season. Now, this does have vinegar in it, um, but I wanna shake this. So I'm going to put my lid on without the parchment paper 
um, so that I can shake it and then I'll rinse the lid off and put the parchment paper on there. I just don't want it spilling everywhere while I shake it. So you'll wanna give this a really good shake because your honey needs to be incorporated with those herbs and vinegar. So once it looks like that, then I'm going to add my label and I'll let it sit for four to six weeks. Final recipe for today is gonna be um, honey fermented garlic or garlic fermented honey. Uh, I do have three other recipes I want to share with you. Those are all elderberry recipes, um, but I've been working on this for about four hours today. I could have gotten it done faster if I wasn't filming, but it is important for me to be able to share what I know. Yeah. Um, and I've had several friends ask me to do this. So I don't have a problem doing that, but I have some other things I have to get done today. So the elderberry stuff will have to wait until tomorrow and I'll try to get um, that video out later this weekend or next week. But the last one for today is garlic fermented honey. And this one is so incredibly easy. I did not film myself peeling all of the garlic because that takes forever and it's kind of boring. But what you'll do is you'll just peel all of your garlic and then I smashed some of them to get some of the peel off. And then some of them that I didn't smash to get the peel off, I poked just a couple of holes in the garlic with a fork so that the honey can penetrate that garlic so that all of the properties of the honey can get into the garlic and the garlic can get into the honey. Um, so I'm just going to now completely cover this garlic with my honey. There is no measuring to this either. So for those of you who enjoy precision, I'm probably driving you crazy today because I don't measure and I just kind of go with the flow on how I think it should be. And then I'm just going to make sure that any of those pockets down there of air are taken out. You don't want any air down there. So I'll just kind of let the honey get off my fork here. And while that's happening, I'll talk to you uh, about some of the properties and why I make this. So first, I use this primarily to fight cold, um, cold and flu. So what I'll do is if I start feeling sick, this is not a daily, this is not a preventative for me, but if I start feeling sick, I will take a spoonful, kind of like this, but with a spoon of some honey and a garlic and I will eat it. And I do that once a day for, I don't know, five or six days while I'm feeling sick. And I do that in conjunction with all the other tinctures that I told you I take only when I'm sick. Um, this is just is not a preventative for me, but garlic does wonders when you're sick. And I know it's maybe not the best tasting thing for some people. I love garlic and I love honey, so I don't mind it. But I know it's really difficult for other people to get down. Trust me, it's worth it. This is basically like uh, taking an antibiotic from the doctor. And if you're sick, if you have a sinus infection, I promise you will feel better. Um, now, <laughs> with that being said, I'm not a healthcare professional and I'm not supposed to make any of these claims. All I can tell you is my experience. So I'm not saying this will cure you of anything, but in my experience, this makes me feel 10,000 times better. And some of the other things that um, this is good for are some of the properties that are in here. It does help promote gut health. Um, there are some anti-cancer properties in here. It's great at lowering cholesterol and treating colds and also aids in blood pressure um, as well as helping, um, it's an anti-inflammatory, so it helps with some bloating and things like that. So that's what I do. Um, this will ferment for a couple weeks. Actually, I think I'm gonna add more honey just to make sure that everything is completely submerged in that honey. You don't want to go too light on the honey. I know honey is expensive, especially raw local honey, but it is worth it. And speaking of expense, everything that I've done here today is not exactly super cheap. This does cost money to do this, but the way I see it is, and you may not agree with me and that's fine, but the way I see it, I'm gonna spend that money at the doctor if I'm sick or on antibiotics, and I just prefer not to do that. I prefer to do it this way and do the best I can taking care of myself using high quality ingredients and using food as medicine in the hopes of preventing 
Now that being said, if I'm super sick, I will still go to the doctor, don't get me wrong. But this all really does help. And the two years that I, I did this in 2018 and 2019, and those two years that I did this and followed this protocol religiously, I didn't get sick at all. Not that I got just a little sick and was able to get, I did not get sick at all. Now that's my experience, that may not be everybody's experience, but for me it's worth the money to put into this. Some years I'm not able, like last year I couldn't afford to do it and I got sick a lot. So I do believe it works and I do believe that it is worth the money that you put into it. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling with these lids today. I bought some off-brand lids and bands and I won't do that again. Anyways, while I struggle to get this lid put on here, this is just gonna ferment for a few weeks. Um, I store it in my refrigerator, and then if I'm sick, I'll take a spoonful with a clove of garlic and eat that. Um, but otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up and clean up this giant mess and go get some of my other things done for today. And um, I'll do the elderberry stuff for you guys tomorrow. So one thing I realized I failed to mention when I was making the honey, lemon, and ginger cough syrup is I know a lot of people don't like honey. I know a lot of people don't like lemon and ginger. And I also know that a lot of people just don't like the feeling of like a cough syrup or anything like that as being swallowed. So if you can't swallow that or if you don't like the taste of that, what you can do is put a spoonful of that into tea and drink it that way or if you don't like tea you can just do hot water and drink it that way it helps to dilute some of the flavor and it also just makes it easier to go down now if you can stomach swallowing just a spoonful of it I think that you should um, part of why I think that is that honey is going to coat your throat and honey is an antibacterial and antiviral um, just by nature and so it's going to help clear that infection a lot faster but I know some people just can't stomach doing that. So there are some other options. Mix it in some hot water, mix it in some tea, or I wouldn't think it'd be very good in coffee, but if you wanted to try it just to get it down, you could do that as well. So these are some of the books. Well, actually, these are the only books that I have that um, pertain to herbalism. Uh, like I said, I have just recently, within the last few years, been gaining interest in this. So this is what I have so far. I am on a pretty tight budget, so I don't purchase a whole lot of books. Two of these were gifts, and then the other two I did purchase. But the first book that I ever got um, when I started gaining an interest in herbalism was this one here. And this was a gift from my aunt. But this is Rosemary Gladstar's Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide, and it is incredible. She, um, Rosemary Gladstar is just such a wealth of information and knowledge in this field, and I highly recommend her books. This was the second book that I got, and it is also a Rosemary Gladstar book. It's Herbal Recipes for Vibrant Health, and there is just a ton. I mean, it's a really thick book, and there's a ton of information in there. Um, the next book I got, I actually purchased. This is Amy Fuel's uh, Homesteader's Herbal Companion. If you're not familiar with Amy Fuel, she's the founder of Homesteaders of America. She's had a blog. She has a YouTube channel. She has a podcast. I have followed her since about 2016, and I just love her approach on things. Everything is just very practical, and that's what I love about this book is it's real-life practical application. Um, so this is a great one, especially if you're homesteading, if you have animals, um, or if you have kids as well. This is a great book to pick up. And this one is my most recent book. And this was also a gift from my aunt, and it is the Complete Medicinal Herbal. It's incredible. I have not made it all the way through this book yet, but there is just so much information in here on, like, everything. So I highly recommend these four books. Um, I'll leave a link to each one down below, but definitely check them out. If you don't want to purchase these books, there's a ton of online information. Just be careful and make sure you trust the source. Um, I really trust these sources, especially Rosemary Gladstar. She is, well, if you're in herbalism at all, you probably know who she is, but she is like the mecca of herbal information. She is just incredible. Um, so I have both of her books here and I trust everything that is in there. 
She's got several other books that are on my list, but like I said, I am on a budget. So this is what I have so far. If you have any recommendations for me, definitely drop me a comment. I would love to hear about that. Um, but like I said, I'll leave these links down below for you to check them out. And if you have any questions for me, you can ask, but I am new to this, so I don't know that I'll have the answer. I may just point you towards a resource. So um, still feel free to ask, but just know that I'm a new at this as well. I don't know everything. I'm still learning and on my journey. Um, so I'd love for you to follow my journey, and I think that we can learn a lot from each other and sharing resources like this. Okay, so we didn't get through everything today. It's getting a little bit later in the day and I have some things I have to get done today. So I'm gonna split this video into two parts and go ahead and finish with what we got done today. And then tomorrow I'll do the remaining three recipes, which are all elderberry recipes. So it'll be kind of a good way of splitting the videos up. And I will try to get those posted here pretty quickly. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed what we did today. I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, again, I am very new to using herbs as medicine and um, kind of treating everything holistically. So I definitely have no claims of being any sort of a certified herbalist or even a healthcare profession professional in any way, shape or form. So please do your research and decide what is best for you and your family. If you feel like you need to um, bring in the advice of a healthcare professional, I fully support that. I think that that is something that you guys should just decide what is right for you and your family. But I will leave a link down below to each of the books that I talked about um, and kind of some resources that I have used. And then if you have any questions, I would love to hear them. Drop me a comment or send me an email. And then again, if you're not following me on TikTok, I do post a lot more regularly over there. So definitely give me a follow. I'll leave a link for that as well. But otherwise, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next video.